Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is one of those nights when I have to give WWE their credit, man. I have to give them credit. They surprised me with a lot of things. The number one thing that surprised me with, and I shouldn't have been surprised about it, though. I shouldn't have been surprised about it, but still got to give them the credit, still. The number one thing that surprised me on the most is storytelling. It was two good stories. Not going into the match, but during the match. Of the WWE Championship match with Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton. And the other main championship match, the Universal Champion Roman Reigns and Jay Uso. Good two storytelling matches, man. Another one was told. Not just storytelling, but the match itself was brilliant. The Intercontinental Championship match. We're gonna talk about it. gonna talk about it all man. We gonna lay it down. Everything that happened on this night. It's not gonna be a quick review like I usually do it. I'm gonna dissect everything. Why? Because it's a pay per view and I got a lot of things to say about this show. Definitely surprised me man. Before we even before we even start talking about this show man, hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. I know there's going to be a lot of you searching and searching and searching. If you happen to be stumbled upon right here to this channel, hit that subscribe button for your boy. I will appreciate that, man. I will appreciate that. And share. Share the video, man. Whatever the case may be. Reddit, Facebook, Twitter. Whatever the case may be. Share it. Sharing is caring, man. Y'all sharing is caring? Sharing is caring, man. Share this video. Leave a comment. On what you guys thought of Class of Champions. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know. Let me know, man. Let me get through this. So I can go join my boys, man. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I'm not even going to talk about the tag team match on the kickoff. Why should I? It's the same damn match we've seen over and over again. Only thing you need to know is Cesaro and Nakamura retain against who? You guessed it. The Lucha House Party. Nothing to say. Nothing to say. But I will say this though. It's rumors going around. I don't know if it's true. I'm just hearing it. So I'm going to let you guys know. There's rumors. There's words. There's talks. Whatever the case may be. Going around about Shayna Baszler being pregnant. I don't know if that's true. If it is true. Someone let me know. Please. I would appreciate it. If she is. I will be shocked. Cause it just it, it just kind of like how Becky Lynch's pregnancy was just out of nowhere, like a RKO. But anyway, man, let's kick off the show, man. And I knew this match was going to kick off the show. This was the one match I was looking forward to. Then we got the match on SmackDown. Kind of decreased my momentum a little bit for this match, but it still surprised me, man. Not much, but still surprising. Jeff Hardy. Sami Zayn, AJ Styles for the Intercontinental Championship. Who is the right to be called champion in this match, man? Everybody brought it. First off, everybody brought it. AJ, Jeff. We knew Jeff was going to bring it. This is Jeff freaking Hardy in the last match. Of course he was going to bring it. But the one guy surprises more was Sami Zayn. Not only did he brought it, but he also brought it with his mind. He also brought it with his mind when he used the handcuffs, not just on AJ Styles, but to Jeff Hardy. He handcuffed Jeff Hardy's ear, y'all. Handcuffed to the ear, other part to the chair. Not chair. Ladder. I said chair. Ladder. I recovered. That's brain number one. Brain number two. The moment when AJ Styles was looking about to catch the championship. Sami Zayn noticed this. What does he do? He handcuffs AJ Styles' arm. And then he sees AJ Styles climbing to the ladder. So then he took the other piece and handcuffs himself to it. With his body laying on the mat, AJ Styles could not climb at that moment to catch the championship. Brilliant. Brilliant by Sami Zayn. Then in the heat of the moment when Jeff Hardy found some way to get back in the fight. Got into the ring, trying to capture the championship. We seen how Sami Zayn was in the heat of the moment. 
He then takes off the handcuffs. He had the key to the handcuffs. He takes the handcuffs off himself and then lock it onto the to the ladder while AJ Styles was trying to climb for the championships, man. And while this was going on, while both men were just incapacitated, Sami Zayn went up. While AJ Styles watching him go up and cast the championship, that was just excellent. Beautiful. That's a great hillish... Th it was just great, man. It was and and the right man won. The right man won. A lot of you might not like Sami Zayn, but you cannot deny the act he put on his night. And not only that, he cannot deny the victory. That was just brilliant, brilliant by Sami Zayn, man. I love it. I absolutely love it. After him just just being away, then to come all the way to this moment, and then. Become the official champion. Not in his mind. But still. Jeff Hardy was a champion. Become the official champion. No words. No more words. No pun intended to Jeff Hardy. But no more words man. That's all I got to say about that. I thought that was a great recovery win. After everything. After everything man. That was just a great. That was a great opening. That was just a great opening. That's all I can say about that. Then we see Drew Gulak win the 27 championship. I don't know why this thing, this type, this championship. So then we go on to the next match up. We have Apollo Crews versus Bobby Lashley for the United States Championship. Match was decent. Lashley retains. That's it. That's all it was. All I can say is with Apollo Crews losing. I guess he can go back to the cafeteria, but that might not happen. That might not happen because I feel like they're going to continue with the Hurt Business and Apollo Crews and Ricochet. We might even see Ricochet be the next in line to face Lashley. But I also have a sneaky suspicion with the Hurt Business fighting Retribution. I have a sneaky feeling that one of the Retribution members might become the new United States Champion. That's just me just speculating. Might be a long shot in the dark, but hey, not out of the realm of possibility. With them feuding on Raw, as we've seen, Retribution fought third business. And speaking of Retribution, they dropped the ball with them. I feel like it no longer feels like just out of nowhere. It feels more like an act now. It feels like they are now part of the show, you know. So it kind of takes away the aspect of them just showing up randomly and just feeling like it's just unpredictable. Like now it's just... It just like we feel like it's gonna come, we feel like it's gonna happen now. But I, we also don't know why they're still doing what they're doing. We still don't know why they're doing what they're doing. So like right now, like retribution angle, kind of dropping for me, man. It kind of dropping for me. And we know who half of the members are: Mia Yam, Dominic Dajakovic, Jose Martinez. It's more of them. That's just some names for you guys. I know, pretty sure you guys know all of them by now. You know. So they kind of dropping the ball with it, but we'll see what happens, man. Maybe they might come out and know like a come out and know like a RKO and just shock us all with something big, something real big. I'm predicting, maybe I don't know, but might happen, might not. Last year still the champion, as he should be, as he should be. I said it at the beginning. Bobby Lashley should have been the champion all along. It never should have been MVP. I deserve that credit. I said Lashley should have been Lashley the entire time. Now he's a champion. Ain't looking good with it. I, I give Lashley credit. And the match with Apollo Crews wasn't bad at all. Wasn't bad whatsoever. I just wish they stopped feuding because I'm tired of it just like with the next match. No, not the next match yet. But man, oh, wait a minute. Whoa, wait a minute. Just like this next match. Exactly. Street Profits, <laughs> Andrade, and Garza. I know y'all tired of this. I know for a fact y'all are tired of seeing this, man. I know I am. I couldn't even get invested in the match because I'm sick of it. But they did put on a good match. What I did not like was the ending. The ending to me just made me just want to pull my hair out if I had any. Which I don't. But check this out, y'all. Check out this ending right here. They had Andrade kick out at two. But the referee didn't see it. So he counts the three and gave the win to the Street Profits. So what does this tell us? They're going to fight again. They're just dragging this along. I don't know how long they're going to drag it, but I'm just sick of it. It's more. It's, it's feeling like they're going to keep this up until the draft. 
We know the draft is coming up. They're going to keep this up during the draft. Then we get the draft, and then we're going to see Street Profits pay someone new. If they were going to pull the trigger on the Street Profits losing, it should have happened tonight. But because it didn't happen, it's never going to happen with Andrade and Garza. They are not going to become the new Raw uh, Tag Team Champions. If they do become the champions the next time they fight, I'm a flagging idiot. Why? Because I feel like they should have done it here. They should have done it here. Why the fuck finish? Why are you making the just, just speculate all of a sudden over and over again with this? Why are you dragging this along? Enough is enough already. Stop this feud. I'm sick of it. We are sick of it. And who do we get? Carmella? Tessa Blanchard? Anybody. Anyone. We get Oscar. No. That's a No. I didn't. Out of everybody in the bat, we got Oscar. That really goes to show that Dudley had no faith in that women's division. Out of everybody in that bag, you chose the Raw Women's Champion in a match in which didn't even matter. Didn't even matter. Oscar wins by DQ because barely attacked with a steel chair. Then we get the obvious right then and there. We get Sasha Banks, Meg Hurt and all, coming out and attacking Bailey. This really upset me. Yes, I expected it, but it upset me because I wish they just drag this on. If there's anything they should have dragged on, it's this one. It's this few. Why are you rushing it? Why are you rushing this? I, Matthew, not even Oscar. Sasha, she ain't even been there. After the attack from Bailey, Sasha should not even have been there. But there she is. There she is, y'all. Now what they're gonna do. I'm mad also because it's one of my homies told me this. I believe it was Team Wood. I apologize that I can't remember who said it. Someone told me this. If you're in the comment section, let me know you told me this. Because I know you were dead on. I'll even pin your comment as the apology for forgetting. Let me know you told me this. What he told me was this was going to happen. This we told me. He said that he's going to rush this and put it at hell in the cell. That's what he told me. Now, after I seen what happened tonight, now that I see how Nacelle was coming, he was right. It's going to come. So I should bang some belly wolf fight hell in the cell. It's going to happen. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. Now, to be fair, it deserves that hell in the spell spotlight. I just feel as though they drag it on a little too fast. And yes, they can continue it. They can have Sasha and Bailey go at it again because realistically, according to their eyes, they got nobody. They got nobody to face Bailey. So clearly that was the answer tonight. They have Oscar came out there out of everybody in that bag. Carmella, Alexa Bliss, Lacey Evans, Tamina. I'm just naming a few. Dana Brooke. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, I'm not wrong, man. I'm not. Sasha and Bailey were having the hell in the cell. Like I said, it deserves that spotlight, but at the same time, I feel like they're rushing it. That's all I'm going to say about that. I'm going to leave that at that, y'all. It's like I'm happy, but I'm mad, too. I'm both. I'm conflicted. Which is okay. Which is okay. Drew McIntyre faces Randy Orton. Good match. I enjoyed it. Um, Was it overdue? Yes, with Big Show coming and Christian coming to attack Randy Orton, as well as Shawn Michaels himself with the sweet chin music. And the push to finish. Then we get Ric Flair driving off with Randy Orton. Andrew McIntyre retains the goal. After a clayboard kick and a punk kick for Randy Orton. See ya bye. See ya bye. That should be it for Randy Orton, man. Randy Orton had lost two times. First at SummerSlam with the fuck finish, kind of. Not really fuck finish, but just the, the out of nowhere pin. To this moment. The ambulance match. I feel like this is it, right? With the draft coming along, maybe someone from SmackDown will face Drew next. I don't know. I don't know. One one part about the draft is we're going to get new fresh matchups. That's what we need right now. We're seeing the same matches every week. That's why my love for wrestling is dying. Because we see the same thing 
on Raw, over and over. NXT doesn't feel the same anymore. SmackDown is a hit and miss. SmackDown is a hit and miss show each and every week. Each and every week. But Drew McIntyre did retain the championship. Next up, last but not least, Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso. The match doesn't even matter. The match doesn't even matter. All we seen was Jay trying to fight back and Roman Reigns dominating. As we knew, as we expected. The only reason why this match dragged along is because the storytelling with both men. Which was excellent. Excellent storytelling by both men. We seen Roman Reigns. We seen Jay Uso just talk and smack to one another. Jay trying to, trying to prove something to Roman Reigns that he no longer that little brother. Roman Reigns is trying to prove to himself that he is the big dog. He letting him know, I am the chief. I am the man. I am the god here. This is my yard. This is my house. No one taking it. Not you, not anybody. It was great, man. And entertaining. It was entertaining. Fuck, it had me dying. It had me in tears, y'all. I'm saying this, watching Roman Reigns just, just be the Roman Reigns he should have been. You watch Roman Reigns now, you sitting here like, bro, this this is what Roman Reigns should have been for years. Right here. This side Roman Reigns where he should have been for years. And it finally come upon us. And I'm enjoying every second of it. I'm enjoying it, man. And he showed that he's a heel. What he did tonight just showed you that he is a heel. For those who are still kind of conflicted about it. Because there are some you still conflicted. I bet you ain't conflicted no more. We seen Jimmy came out there, had the uh, white flag, ready to throw the towel for J for Jay. Jay didn't want to throw the flag. He wanted to continue the fight, but room was too much for Jay. Eventually, Jimmy throws in the white flag, and the Mister Roman that he is the chief, he is the big dog. You got it. It's great, man. It's great. So, what's gonna happen now? Are we gonna see Jimmy now go up against Roman Reigns at Hell in the Cell to get revenge for his brother Jay? Possible. I wouldn't mind it with this storytelling. I wouldn't mind it at all. They already started with Jay out of nowhere. Not believable still, but good storytelling nonetheless. So where they do with it? Where they go with it? I'm going to say it's going to be Jimmy. It has to be Jimmy. I feel like at this point it has to be Jimmy going against Roman Reigns to hell in the cell to try to get revenge on Jay, right? We'll see, man. We're also on SmackDown. Yes, of course, some of you might tell me Big E, but... I feel like they still gotta like build that up still, you know? Yes, Biggie will get the moment. Like you feel it you feel like it's coming, but I feel like they still have to just be wait, wait for Big E. Be a little patient with Big E for now. Not yet, but time is right, you'll know it. When the time is right, you will know it. And that's it, man. That's your class of champions. They didn't do the women tag team championship match. I don't know why, but they didn't do it. It ain't the business of pregnant, I don't know. But we'll see, man. So that is your review, y'all. That's your review. What you think? Honestly, I thought this show was cool. I thought it was great. It wasn't bad at all. The only thing I didn't enjoy was... What I didn't enjoy? I didn't enjoy the ending to the Raw Tag Team Championship match. And I thought Vega and Oscar could have been better. But I'm not going to show them fully, though. I'm not going to show them fully. But overall, it was great. It was cool. You know? Lashley and... And, uh... Apollo, yes, tired of it, but they still had a decent match. They still had a decent match. I got to give them that credit, man. I got to give them that just due. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your Class of Champions review, man. That's it for me. I'm out of here. Thank you all for watching. Uh, Monday Night Raw review, I don't know if I'm going to do it. I'm still debating that. Don't don't expect to just put on vacations and hope for the best. <laughs> But, I mean, it, it, hey, if something happens on the show that we're talking about, I'll definitely be here. Or maybe I'll do what I was planning to do, you know, before. We'll probably be, like, just talking about one thing. Just one big thing happening on the show. If that even something happens, you know. If something even happens on the show, you know. I'm not expecting nothing really to happen until after the draft, honestly. Usually at this time, when you hear about the draft, nothing usually happens until after the draft. That's what I'm expecting. That's why these shows just to be dull and boring until the, after the draft. We'll see. Remember I said it. So thank y'all for watching. Appreciate y'all checking me out, man. Hit that like button, subscribe. And I'll see each and every single one of you for the very next video.